What's up guys, Molly Reaver here with another Raid Shadow Legends video and today is the day we are taking on Fire Knight Hard Stage 10 uh, with our new Fusion Champion Newt. Uh, it is the best team I have seen so far. It currently holds the world record as far as speed clears. Um, it is 100% if you build it correctly. All sorts of good stuff. Uh, now, full disclaimer, it's still Fire Knight Hard 10. Uh, you still require some very specific champions, some very strong builds, and even some specific uh, awakenings as well. Uh, so it is not still yet for everyone. We'll see if we can get some better or some more uh, free-to-play friendly comps out there, but this one is as good as it gets at the moment. Uh, now, the comp itself was made by a man named Callus. Uh, he's actually the guy that also created the uh, Fire Knight Calculator, if anybody has used that yet. Um, he also has an amazing count. He's the one that has the world record, uh, and the team so far has put up, I believe, a minute and 10 seconds is the fastest clear in Fire Knight Heart 10. Uh, so all that being said, let's go in and take a look. Uh, now, mine is not built as well as his, so the best I've gotten so far is a minute 26. Uh, and here is the team. Again, very high-end team, very high-end gear, very high-end blessings. Uh, you'll see that we've got uh, Cardiel still in the lead, still required. Uh, we do still require counterattack. However, we are now using Martyr, uh, mainly because she's a little bit faster as far as animation-wise. Uh, she also brings a decreased defense, which is nice. Um, and then she helps, uh, for me, CC the waves a little bit. Uh, then we've got Coldheart. We've got Kaimar in here for Kaimar things. You know, he's going to reset everybody. Uh, and then we've got Newt ready to do his uh, turn meter reduction and his big AoE smacks. I'm sorry, not AoE stack, smacks, max HP smacks. Uh, so let's take a run, quick look at the run first. Um, I'm just going to let it run through, let you just watch. Uh, then we'll look at the tune, and then I'll explain a couple other things, because there are some tricky parts through the waves uh, that you're going to want to pay attention to. But I want to show you what it looks like before we get into the gritty details. So you can see we getting through here. The first wave in about 21 seconds. On to the second wave. And slicing through here. Again, going to get to the details about the tricks and pitfalls of this, of these waves. But let's just bask in its glory for now. On to the boss and less than a minute. Everybody opens up with their initial turns. It's impossible pretty much to drop the shield before he gets his first turn. Then we get our counterattacks. Ally attack. couple of big pops Kaimar reset and we do it all over again boom minute 37 on that one 41 turns not too shabby uh, you can see Cardiel doing some work at a million damage Kaimar also at a million so you can see that they are built for damage we'll get to all that here in a second uh, Coldheart at 1.8, and then Newt um, at 4 mil, and Martyr coming in there with a little bit of damage as well. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so, as far as the builds go, um, the tune is actually pretty easy with these champs. Um, basically, everybody has to be over 232 speed. And then their turn or their speed order has to be in a certain situ uh, certain order. So Cardiel is our fastest, then Coldheart, then Newt, then Martyr, then Kaimar. Uh, so everybody over 232 speed, and then in that order. So Kaimar is your slowest, all the way up to Cardiel being the fastest. So let's start with Cardiel here. Everybody is built for damage, so you can see we are in lethal gear. Uh, I basically had to take apart my account for this one. 
uh, but it did work out pretty well. And actually, because of the lowered speeds, it's actually a bit easier um, than what I started out with. So for him, total stats, we've got 45k HP, uh, 5.4k attack, 3.3 defense. The HP and the defense does uh, make a difference because you are going to take that first initial hit from the Fire Knight. Uh, so you do need to build them tanky. Uh, he is at 245 speed, so again, he is our fastest champ. Uh, we've got him crit capped at 278. Resistance and accuracy does not matter on him. I do not have any area bonuses for Fire Knight, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, however, if you are building the comp, that can absolutely help you. Uh, we do have Phantom Touch on him. You will see that we have two champions, fully six-star awakened, uh, both with Phantom Touch. That's kind of necessary. Uh, you can get away with just one of them. Um, however, it makes a little, little less uh, consistent if you're against the boss. Um, and that's just a matter of adding that extra attack to that trying to drop that uh, shield at 21 hits so unfortunately you do need phantom touch if you don't have multiple six stars uh, pretty much put all of your guys all of your champions in phantom touch uh, that way you do have that extra chance to get those two hits but that is pretty much essential here uh, so for his masteries let me get myself out of the way for this one uh, we are just down the offense tree for Warmaster, uh, and then down the um, support tree just for a little bit of extra heals and things like that. Uh, so next fastest, we've got our Coldheart. Again, also in lethal gear. Uh, she's got some refresh accessories. That's more for the waves. You don't really need that. Uh, as far as skills go, or uh, stats go, we've got 42k HP, uh, 3.4k attack, 3k defense, 242 speed, so she is just slower than cardio. Uh, we've got fully crit capped with 274% crit damage. Um, her accuracy is nice against the waves, uh, namely to um, reduce the, the turn meter or put up the... Uh, some debuffs that's for like Riho and things like that, so you can't uh, or so make use of her passive and what have you. Um, but you don't need it on the boss, so just about 200 accuracy is enough for the wave, so you don't have to worry about it after that. Again, she is Phantom Touch. She is 6-star, uh, and you do need the Phantom Touch. For Masteries, for her, we are down to Giant Slayer, of course. Um, and then down the support tree, uh, we do like the evil eye just to again help with the waves. Um, and then sniper just for, uh, actually, I don't even change these. These are still the old ones. You don't actually need sniper. Uh, there's nothing else that's really going to do any, do you any good on that anyway. Uh, so next in line is the man himself, Newt. I'll just, I'll just stay here. Uh, he is also in lethal gear. Uh, again, he is now going to be the third fastest, so he is 240 speed, so he's right in the middle of everybody. Uh, we've got him at 41k HP. Uh, his attack doesn't matter. He's a defense-based champ. we got him 5.9 defense, uh, 240 speed, crit cap, 277 crit damage. Uh, I do have accuracy on him because he is going to land that, those freezes in order to reduce the uh, turn meter. I do have a little bit of resistance on him as well that is actually... Uh, done on purpose uh, and I'll explain why but that is going to be for part of the waves and uh, again I'll, I'll explain why we're doing that uh, for him since we don't need the extra phantom touch I do have him in soul reap just in case again for getting through the waves a little bit faster for masteries we are also down to uh, giant slayer for him and then down the support tree as well again grabbing that evil eye uh, will help against the waves. Next up is going to be Martyr. Uh, Martyr is in a shield set. She is the only one in a shield set. You can also use Bolster for her. Uh, basically, she is just going to give us that extra protection against that first whack of the, the Fire Knight. Um, depending on how you build her uh, and how we handle the waves, um, you can have her in high HP or the lowest HP to end up being the target of Riho. I'll explain what I mean by that. 
uh, whenever you get to it. But for Martyr, we've got 45k HP, uh, 2k attack that does matter. She's defense based as well. Uh, 5.3 defense, 239 speed, so she is just slower than Newt. Uh, crit capped, 277 crit damage. Uh, accuracy on her in order to place the decreased defense against the boss, which is pretty helpful. Um, you do also use like her uh, provokes and things like that against the waves, but you don't need all the accuracy for that. Uh, I don't even have a blessing on her. Uh, I did actually book her out for this, so you do need her booked. Uh, for masteries, we've got down to War Master for her. She's just a single hitter. Uh, and then again, down to Evil Eye because those waves suck. Uh, last but not least, we've got Kaimar. Kaimar in Savage Set, again, built for damage. Uh, he is the slowest on the team at 233 speed. Uh, again, everybody just has to be over 232. Uh, 4 point, or 42k HP, 4.4k attack, 3k defense, crit cap, 288 crit damage. A uh, little bit of accuracy for him as well, again, just to be useful in the waves. Uh, I have Soul Reap on him, again, just to help clear the waves a little bit. If you do not have the Phantom Touch, put Phantom Touch on your champions because you do need a couple of procs from that for the shield. Uh, and then as far as masteries go, we are again down to War Master, um, and then Evil Eye in the support tree. Uh, so those are the champions as far as team setup goes. Uh, there's going to be some options here as well. This is going to be mainly to clear the waves and things like that, uh, but we'll show you what these are. Let me get myself out of the way again. Uh, so for Cardiel, uh, we're going to open with his ally attack. Uh, and then turn it off. So both his A1 and A2 are off. Uh, once he opens with the A2, then all we're using is his A1. Um, you can do the same thing on the second wave. However, he has to take enough turns in order to clear this out. So if you're clearing the wave quick enough, he's not going to cycle back to this. So I recommend turning it off um, and just use his A1. Uh, for the boss, we are going to open with the A2, which is the block debuffs and revive on death. Um, and then we are going to prioritize his ally attack from there. Uh, for Kaimar, I do also have them, I guess I should note, they are in position order on purpose. Um, so Cardiel, uh, obviously speed lead. Kaimar and Coldheart are just in there. They're just going to throw some their hits in when they get there. Uh, but for that ally attack, the turn order matters as far as uh, once you break the shield, then your debuffs and stuff can be placed after the shield is open. So if you've got extra attacks on the end of the uh, ally attack, those last couple of champs will apply their debuffs. In that case being Newt with his turn meter control, uh, which actually isn't as important uh, on that initial opening, uh, but it comes in handy on the next one. Uh, and then Martyr putting up the decreased defense uh, that helps me. So they are in position order on purpose. Uh, so that being said, uh, Kaimar, he's going to open up with his A2. We're going to shut off the, the reset. Um, I also turned off the A2, so he only opens with it. Um, that way he has it ready for the second wave uh, instead of just wasting it like twice on the first wave, things like that, because I've seen him do that before. Uh, and then again, we open it up and just use it as normal. The opening doesn't really matter. He would do that anyway if he had it. And then we just make sure we have the... Uh, reset turned off and then for the boss wave we are opening with his a1 and then we are prioritizing his reset uh, for cold heart we are just not using her heart seeker on the first wave uh, as well as the second wave she's basically just a1 and a2 as often as she would like uh, through those first two waves and then against the boss we are opening with her a1 we are turning off the a2 uh, do not prioritize the Heart Seeker just in case you have to. Or, again, her A or her AI is set up to automatically A1 into the shield. Uh, if you force the A3, you could mess that up because it's going to follow the presets before it follows her programmed AI. So just leave that as default. Uh, for Newt, uh, round one, we're opening with the A2 and turning it off, uh, not using his A3 at all. With the A2, um, he actually opens with the A2 
against the boss, so I turn that off entirely, uh, as well as the A3. And then against the boss, we are opening with that A2, and then prioritizing the A3, which is that 3-hit max HP smack. And then for Martyr, uh, we are doing nothing through the wave. You can actually use her A3. Uh, that's the Provoke. Uh, I am saving that actually for wave 2, because sometimes she um, cycles back to it, sometimes she doesn't. But it is helpful against... Well, it's actually helpful against both of the waves, but if you kill the waves fast enough, uh, she doesn't cycle enough to, to be use it on both waves. So we get through the first wave easy enough because Cardiel is also doing his ally attack, which helps. So I don't need it on the second or on the first wave. We're going to use it on the second wave. Um, on this, I do actually want to delay it because um, Riho is a giant pain in the butt. So I save this skill for that because um, she Riho will always cleanse the first debuffs that get on her. Um, so you need to make sure that she gets attacked and gets some other debuffs, namely from Kaimar and things like that, and she's going to cleanse those, and then Martyr will be able to provoke her uh, on the second turn. So opening with the A1 just to delay this A3 by one turn, uh, turning off the A2. And then on the boss, we are opening with the A2, which is our counterattack, uh, not using the A3 at all because it doesn't really do anything. And then we're just going to use the A1, and the A1 is where we're putting our decreased defense. So that is the presets. Let's watch it through a couple more times, and I'll explain the random things through the, the uh, waves here. So we got our ally attack to open them up. This wave, you tend to get uh, one or two attacks from the uh, Venuses. However, if you get them decreased attack, they're not going to hurt you really at all. Um, or if you kill them fast enough, they're just going to die. But if they do get an attack, it's not the biggest of deals because they're just going to um, do their little AoE. Second wave, you can see popping through. Now we've got our uh, Devo able to be placed on Riho, so now we can provoke them so that all they're going to do is A1. Uh, if Riho... One of the things I'm actually going to stop it here for a second... Uh, so Riho, if she ever gets in a turn, if she's not provoked, if you're not using that provoke there, um, she is going to do her A2, which is all the debuffs and the big old smack. She's going to do that against the or whoever on your team has the lowest HP. So you can actually tune your builds uh, to make sure somebody that can actually tank that hit uh, is the target. Uh, in the case of my team, I actually have uh, Newt as that target. That is why I had that res uh, 200 and some odd resistance on him. That way, whenever she targets him and tries to do that A2, he can actually resist all of those debuffs, and then the hit doesn't doesn't even scratch him. Um, he can tank it if he takes all of the debuffs, because he is a de uh, defense-based champ. Uh, however, if he then gets crit by the boss on the next turn, it gets uh, pretty dicey from there. Uh, so just things to keep in mind. If you're not controlling Riho and she stays alive at the end, you need to plan for her being able to one-shot one of your champs, um, in which case you can build either Martyr's defense base, so build her with the lowest HP. Granted, she does have the shield set, so you would want her as the highest HP. Um, or you can set up Newt like I have. Uh, so moving along, get through that. On to the boss. Now the boss only takes one turn here, so everybody... Just does their initial setup until let him take a turn. So you can see we got a couple of crits on there, and they got close to dying. However, it's the only attack that they're going to get, so we don't need to worry about them taking more. So as long as you can survive a single crit, that is all you need to do. So we opened up the shield. We got a little bit of uh, turn meter reduction, as well as we landed our decreased defense there for Martyr. Then they all get a single turn. We do another ally attack. Uh, this is where the A1 is going to reduce the turn meter. So you don't actually need turn meter reduction from that first shield opening because Newt's going to be able to take a second attack. Um, or I'm sorry, Cardiel is actually going to be able to take that second attack because he is going to do that uh, ally attack, which is going to be his A, uh, allowed Newt to bring his A1, which is going to reduce the turn, uh, turn meter. 
The only way that would fail is if all three of Newt's hits are resisted for the turn meter reduction, and I have yet to see that actually happen. But other than that, besides the fact that we stopped it there in the middle, uh, it's about a minute 45, minute and a half. Uh, you can see my fastest time was a minute 26. And it's all a matter of basically how fast you can get through the waves here. So you can see there's still two of the Venuses left. Looks like this one might get a turn. Yep, She's going to come in. She's got decreased attacks, so she doesn't do anything to our team. On to wave two. They're just going to roll through here. Kaimar's going to... Oh, what happened there? Looks like we didn't reset for... What did happen there? Oh, no, that was just her first turn. Never mind. I thought she already went twice, and she, for whatever reason, didn't land the provoke, but... Cardiel, because he always joins in attacks, it always throws off whenever you're trying to watch it. Uh, so we were through those waves in a minute. That's actually a little slow. However, again, we do our setup. Take our hit. And then we go through the counterattacks. And the ally attack opens him up. You can see he starts with zero turn meter here uh, with the decreased defense. Then a big slam. Martyr just for one on top. Then we reset and we do it all over again. Ally attack, there's our turn meter reduction. And then smack and done. Minute 42 on that one, so it was 42 seconds through the boss. Uh, not too shabby. So... I'm pretty darn excited about this one. Uh, kudos to Callus for coming up with the comp. I know he actually was using Valkyrie here instead of Martyr, um, and then was suggested to him to use the Martyr uh, as being a little faster, and he did shave off some seconds on that. Uh, but I was able to build the same team uh, and get some pretty darn good results. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave comments down below, like, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. And we will catch you in the next one. Later.